In this video, we're taking the Tesla Model 3 long range on a road trip from Manchester to Cambridge. Hey, so normally my wife is with me on these trips, holding the camera for me, and I usually take a lot of equipment with me as well, a really good camera and some other bits and pieces. Today, I've only got this little DJI Pocket 2 and an iPhone 12 mini. So I'm gonna be filming all of today's road trip to Cambridge on these cameras. So sorry if the quality isn't as good as normal, but let me know what you think of the quality of this camera uh, when you're watching the video. So anyway, I'm in a bit of a rush today. I didn't get a full charge last night. So let's get in the car, let's check it out. Let's see what battery percentage we've got and we'll see how the journey is going to look. So we're starting off the journey with 82% battery life. Now I'm just going to show you a little tip here. I just typed in the postcode of the Travelodge and it doesn't seem to want to come up. So something else you can do, if you're on Google Maps, I've got the train uh, Cambridge Travelodge here and what I'm going to do, this is the one I'm going to, the one on Newmarket Road. All you have to do is press the share button up here and then we're going to swipe across until we see uh, the Tesla app just there. We're gonna press that and it's gonna send that direction to the Tesla and we'll see that come through in a second. And it's saying no results found, so I'm, I think I'm gonna to have to put this in manually. So for some reason the sat nav can't seem to find this, so I'm now gonna just choose something very close to it, which is this Cambridge Leisure Park. Uh, let's try and share that to the Tesla. Let's go across here, let's share it, done. There we go, and that one has worked this time. So let's get rid of this music. This is the place, calculating route, finding superchargers for the trip. So it's saying, strangely, I mean, we've got 82% battery life, and it's saying that we're gonna need to stop at the rugby supercharger. Uh, we're gonna have 34%, and then a 10 minute charge, and then we'll get to the Cambridge Leisure Park with 23%. Now, what I actually want to do here, there is a supercharger in Cambridge, so I, I want to top up because I've got to go to Norwich again after Cambridge to pick up my wife who's staying in Norwich on the Sunday. So I'm going to do this journey a little bit differently. I'm going to go to the rugby supercharger. I'm going to charge up a little bit there, but then I am going to go for a second supercharge in Cambridge just to top the battery up to around 90%. So let's go on with the journey and we'll see how it does. Let's press begin trip. Now, this road trip is a little rushed, but it will give you an idea about economy and how planned journeys can change when you own a Tesla. So I began my drive to Cambridge on Friday afternoon, which is pretty busy as I was hitting the rush hour traffic. Now, the ride is always good in a Tesla Model 3, but one thing you'll find is that sometimes the car can over or underestimate the energy needed to get from A to B. And even though I love my Tesla, I would say it's definitely one of the biggest letdowns. For example, in winter, your energy runs out much quicker, and in summer, you seem to have more leftover, so it can be really hard to judge a trip. Now, as long as you don't mind stopping earlier or change to stop later, you'll be fine. So one thing I need to do quickly, I'm just gonna put it on autopilot, is I'm gonna set, reset my trip. Now, obviously this isn't quite fair because I've been rolling for about a, a mile. I've only been driving for just over a mile. But if you ever wanna do this, by the way, just swipe across to the right. This will bring up your trips, you can see here. And then uh, you can swipe up and down to see your odometer, uh, your previous trips. I'm just going to reset one. So if you want to reset a trip, simply press the three dots here and then press reset. And this is going to reset the trip uh, for this journey, just so we can keep an eye on things like what hours per mile, miles traveled and the, and the kilowatt hours used. Now for me personally, um, someone asked in the comments why I never really mentioned my what hour per miles. And it's because I, I don't drive the car really, really sensibly to conserve energy. I drive it very normally. I mean, in long journeys like this, you can see I'm in autopilot now. Uh, it's mainly because I'm talking to you and I'm, I'm doing this, but I have my car in autopilot for a, for a long period of time on long journeys. But generally, you know, if I need to accelerate fast to overtake something, um, I'll do that. We're generally driving at 70 miles an hour. So I'm not, you know, I'm not trying my best to conserve energy. So I'm never surprised if the watt hour per mile is low or high. You know, and, and if, again, if you don't understand watt hours per mile, the lower the number, the better 
the energy is. It's a bit like a miles per gallon meter. So um, the lower the number, the better. Whereas in miles per gallon, obviously the higher it's the better. So I'll try and link in the description below if you want to see a comparison to what hours per miles to MPG, that might give you a better idea. Um, I seem to get around 240 average, maybe a little bit less sometimes. You can see we're at 215 here. As mentioned, I did start this reset whilst we were rolling, so I've not really used much energy to get up to the speed we're traveling now. So this isn't really fair, but obviously this will even out throughout the journey. Now, starting this journey, I actually thought we'd easily be able to get from A to B with no charge, but it seems that Tesla really wants me to charge halfway along the route. So I'm planning to do that. But as we progressed through the journey, the sat-nav updated and then pushed us to a further supercharger closer to Cambridge in St. Neots, which is actually much better because it does mean I'll end up at my destination with more usable battery for the next day. So the drive was going smoothly, but due to the slow traffic, I pulled in for a quick toilet stop. No charging, just a five minute in and out stop. Now we're back on the road and we're heading to the St. Neots supercharger, when I noticed we actually had much more battery than the car originally anticipated. As uh, the car is actually doing pretty well, the traffic seems pretty bad going to this other supercharger. So I've easily got enough battery now to, to get to the Cambridge supercharger. So I've changed my mind. We were going to go to the supercharger just out near St. Neots, I think, but to be honest, it's saying we're now going to arrive uh, in Trumpington with 22%. So that's easily enough. I was a bit worried when it was 10. Um, that one is actually kind of a little bit further away from Cambridge. I kind of got a diversion. So we're going to go straight towards Cambridge. Should save a little bit of time, hopefully. It means we're closer to the city centre as well. So we're using less battery when we kind of come into Cambridge. So I actually manually diverted us onto the Cambridge city centre superchargers in Trumpington. Now you can change superchargers by simply finding one on the map and then clicking on it to navigate to this new supercharger. So we have arrived at the Cambridge supercharger. Uh, it says we've got 22% of battery. Uh, I'm gonna plug in now and see what kind of charging speeds we get off these Tesla chargers. I think these are the fastest ones you can get at about 250 kilowatts. So we'll see, 22% of battery. I'm gonna charge it kind of right up and uh, it looks like there's a John Lewis over the road. So I'm gonna grab a coffee and sit here hopefully for like 30 minutes or so. So we are getting 169 kilowatts an hour. It looks like the charging speed is 770 miles an hour, which is by far the fastest I've ever seen since owning the car. You can see I've got the limit set to just over 90, but let's say we set it at 80, what would that charge at? So there we go. At 158 kilowatts, uh, 720 miles an hour, we would fully charge in 35 minutes. I think that's pretty amazing considering the battery was around 20%. So um, what I'm gonna do, because obviously if you go over your charging time, you'll get charged. So I'm gonna set this at 100% just because I wanna nip over the road, use a toilet and grab a coffee. And you know what it's like, sometimes you might get stuck in a queue. So I'm gonna set this to 100% even though I may stop it a little bit earlier. And you can see that says it's gonna take one hour. Now, of course, I will probably come back and stop that charge earlier than that. I probably don't want to charge to 100%, but I'm just going to leave it there just so we don't get that overstay charge. So I walked over to John Lewis and it turns out it's just a John Lewis collection point. The bus station, which is a parking ride, doesn't have a coffee shop. So um, it's saying we've got about 45 minutes left. So I think I'm going to try and walk over to Waitrose, uh, which is a little bit down the road, get a coffee and hopefully I won't go over. I'll sprint back if we do. Another problem with filming by yourself is that you can't see the battery levels and everything while you're driving. The other camera's just died of a battery and I didn't bring the cable or the cable I've got that does fit it in the car. It doesn't seem to work. So. Everything you're gonna see is probably gonna be filmed on the iPhone 12 mini from now on, unless uh, I can find another charger. So uh, fingers crossed. So, damn, the uh, coffee shop was completely closed. So we've just got ourselves a little Kit Kat, a little can of Diet Coke to keep us going. Yeah, it could be worse. Okay, so we are now about to stop the charge. You can see we've added 
54 kilowatts. Now this supercharger is quite expensive as far as superchargers go. It's 36, 36 pence per kilowatt hour, which means it's gonna cost around 19 to 20 pounds for a top up from um, about 20% up to uh, about 95%. And let's just see how many miles that is. If we go into uh, display and we're gonna change that to distance just to give you an idea so we've added 245 miles for around about 20 pounds what do you think of that so now i've had a quick break and a full charge we're now on a short trip to cambridge city center to check into the travel lodge and catch up with friends so this is cambridge it's a really beautiful city with lots of parks great shops and some really beautiful old buildings. Now, of course, it's more famously known due to Cambridge University, one of the oldest universities in the world. Now, if you've never visited before, I would definitely recommend it. And if you are going, I would recommend a punt down the river so you can do a tour of all the old university buildings. So I was here to catch up with my two friends, Craig and Rene. Uh, so we were gonna have a few beers and catch the England game. Now, as you may know, England won. So we had a great day and night and catch up in Cambridge. So this is a very whistle stop tour. And in the morning, I'm driving on to Norwich to pick my wife who's been at a small 40th birthday party. Then we're heading straight back to Manchester. So the journey was pretty good, not too much traffic around, but quite a lot of heavy rain. We then had to stop in Grantham, and I'd never actually been to this supercharger before, but you can see here, we're pulling in some nice charging speeds. So we stopped for a quick Costa coffee, a charge, and then back on the road. So the rest of the journey was pretty smooth and we arrived back in Manchester with around half of our battery left. But let's look at some of those stats. So we have just arrived back from Cambridge and I had to go to Norwich to pick my wife up. So she's now holding the camera again. So um, again, apologies. This isn't one of my full road trip videos. This is quite a quick one, but I thought a lot of you are very interested in, in things like the economy of the car. So we have completed a 476 mile uh, trip and we got 235 watt hours per mile. Now I was driving the car very normally, um, you know, taking over when I need to, putting my foot down, uh, you know, driving at 50 in some cases. So it's a very, very uh, kind of normal trip. I'll put the cost of the supercharging costs below here right now. I'll need to work that out when I edit the video. Um, and if you've got any questions about Teslas, anything about the costs, the, the economy, anything at all, let me know in the comment section below. And if you want to see one of our full road trips, we did a 900 mile road trip to Cornwall, you can see by clicking up here. And we also did a 670 mile road trip to North Norfolk and Norwich. And in those videos, I cover everything from the charging, the costs, and some of the problems you have when you have a Tesla. So if you want to see those, they'll be coming up next. And uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.